Today we're talking about osmotic flow. It is the most stable and flexible brewing method for pour-over coffee. And after watching this video, you will know everything. I've been researching it for almost two years now, and here is the result. Standardized and understandable. It works with any coffee, but I mostly use light roast. And I've even brewed coffee from the World Championship using it, so it is reliable. And first, let's talk about the stages of brewing. There is only three. As you can see, it's very simple. First stage is bloom. Second one is pulses. And third one is constant pour. I will explain them after the brewing, but now what we should know about this. That this takes from 0 to 30 seconds. And from the 30 seconds you will make pulses until one minute. And from one minute you will have constant pour towards the end. So the only thing you need to think about is it's easy to memorize and here final dose. And what's great about this is that this works for any dose. 8 grams, 1 kilogram, it works. Uh, I mean, this one pulses will change, but for reasonable doses it usually works like this. Of course, this one pulses have an exception. Let's, let's talk about the exception. Sometimes you need to pour to 130. And that's it. That's the exception. When we do these, when we have doses 30 grams and higher, because they need more water and you will understand it. Still, you can use one minute for all of the doses that you brew. So there is no need to memorize the seconds, the grams, nothing of this. Only final dose. This simplifies brewing a lot. And the only two things you need to care about is the grind size and the temperature. That's it. And now let's have some practice. I'm going to brew Rwanda washed coffee, light roast. I'm going to use 15 grams dose. Temperature will be 88 degrees. For the clicks I'm using for this coffee, I will try from 20 clicks for this dose. It means less than sugar to touch, because clicks will not give you anything. The taste will, and that's what's important. But starting point, slightly less than sugar to touch. Like, here is the sugar, here is our grind size. Because sugar is you, but it's better to use lower one, smaller if you use smaller doses. And as for the filters, it's better to use faster flowing, but milliliter filters works well as well. But today I'm going to use Cafe Cabal. Just observe, I will show you how it looks. Pay attention to my flow rate and how aggressively I pour. That's what's important. How aggressively I do the bloom, meaning how hard I'm drawing a spiral, and how much water I've used. I haven't watched in the scale at all, <laughs> because it doesn't matter. What matters is our 30 seconds from which we will start to make a pulses phase. Pay attention to how many grams they pour in the pulses and how the dome breathe. The dry side is nice. So you can see I started from three seconds instead of one minute because it's organic. You just see you can do one one pour on fifty nine seconds and do. A constant pour from say, seven seconds, like so. stuff like this. And now I'm just going to pour until 250 and watch on the flow rate. Yes, there is nothing, nothing to watch on currently. 
the pouring is done to the center. If I'm going to pour in other parts, the taste will be ruined with some cigarette bond notes, usually. At least you can try for yourself. Make one just in the center and another one finish with washing out the grounds. As you can see, it requires some patience, but it will give you some time for meditation and it's great. No stalling. So after I finished the pouring, it's like not that much time. Not the fastest recipe, but you know, it's stable. And now explaining the stages. First of all, stage one, bloom. We just prepare the coffee to work. To work uh, like a one unit. The main goal is to wet all the particles of the coffee, but not too much water. And how I usually make the bloom. I will end there and go to the center to overlap the ground coffee with the wave of water. Usually it takes one to two, one to to three, maybe one to four ratio sometimes, but it's better to stick to this one to two, one to three, not one to four. One to four meaning that you've used too much water because you have coarse grind size. You need to go smaller next time because it probably will be watery. After the blue, we have first of all wet coffee, which is already concentrated liquid inside here. And we're ready to extract. To make the proper extraction, we have pulses. We do need for, for 30 seconds, and it's, as you've seen, it's like 20 grams of water for 15 grams dose, like something like this. You will not be able to pour a lot of water in this stage. First of all, you think about the dome, it's breathing. In the lowest point, it will be like sagged a little bit, and then it will float again. And uh, you specifically pay attention to this dot, dot of the foam. When it goes down, uh, you need to pour another pulse. I will explain how it works in the separate video. For now, you just need to know that you need to think about the breathing of the dome, about this dot, and it's important to let it drain. And also important in this stage is not to pour aggressively, because my flow rate is like 4 grams per second, 6 grams per second. So it's like very gentle pours. And all the pours is better to have like 2-5 centimeters over the coffee, not higher, in order to have less agitation and in order to have a proper dome to work with, so it will not be ruined. And then from one minute or something like this, you do a constant pour to the final dose and it's simple. Probably the most important part in a constant pour is to keep the flow rate very slow. In my case, it's usually 2 grams per second. If you're using 1 to 16 ratio, very important. If you go like 4 grams per second, it's too high. But usually it's pretty organic, so in this stage, you don't even need to have flow rate on your scale. You can just watch that the dome keeps its shape. And that's it. So it could be flat, but not sagged. And not overflowing. That's, uh, that's why we have such a slow and constant flow rate. I hope we're done with this. It was very easy. Let me know in the comments if you have questions, but Let's go to the adjustments of the taste. And we have grind size and water temperature. And of course, ratio. So it was a grind size for 15 gram dose, 16 to 22 clicks. 
usually. For the temperature, like 84, 96. It's the range which is usable, but here is very important part. It's better to use lower temperatures, not go higher than 92. So you can start from 92 degrees Celsius, I don't know the fire guy, sorry, and this will give you the most balanced cup. The higher the temperature, the higher the flow rate will be. Okay, forget these clicks, doses, what grind size gives us is the body. So this is end extraction. This is the most important part to know about the grind size, is the body and extraction. The lower the grind size, the smaller, the heavier the body will be and extraction will be higher, but you probably know it. What the temperature gives us? It gives us complexity, usually in terms of acidity. So the higher the temperature, the higher the complexity and acidity, but not necessarily complexity, because it's also increased aggressiveness. So that's why it's better to keep temperatures like 92, 88 degrees, this range works better for light roast coffee. So how to change the grind size? If you see that your flow rate, like your bloom is 1 to 4, definitely you need to decrease the grind size. If you struggle with pulses, like uh, they are too fast, you like adding water, it flows too fast, drains too fast, uh, you need to decrease grind size. If it very slowly drains, so you can do in pulses phases like two pours, you probably need to go coarser, make grind size bigger, but depends on the taste you want to achieve. But overall you will see the balance in the cup. Starting point is like 92 degrees. Start from this one and use some grind size and then it's safe, pretty safe temperature in order to have enough of complexity and not too much aggressiveness, which will be like in very strange acidity, which is not pleasant. So you start in from 92 degrees using some grind size and then adjust in order to have body which you like. And for the ratio, if you're going to use 1 to 16 and then you're going to drop to 1 to 12.5, could happen sometime because we need less extraction, higher concentration for like cheaper coffee, I would say, not, not that pleasant coffee. In order to make it pleasant, we decrease the ratio. And what we do, if we do so, we decrease the grind, uh, we increase the grind size. So here is our grind size for 1 to 16 and here is our grind size to 1 12.5. Why this happens? Because we need to compensate for TDS, because here TDS will be 1 to 35 percent, like usually, 1.5, whatever. If we go to use this grind size, it will be like 1.60 days, probably. I'm not sure, I haven't tried. But it will be enormous compared to this. That's why if you decrease in the dose, you need to increase the grind size, because, because of TDS. So extraction will be lower. But most important, to know from all of this is that grind size gives the body an extraction and the temperature gives complexity, acidity and aggressiveness, but don't go too high because it will ruin your cup with unpleasant acidity and other funky tastes and roasty taste as well. They usually achieved with the higher temperatures. But it works both ways. You can have two great cups of coffee. You can high, use higher temperature and lower grind size in order to compensate for the flow, or have a high uh, coarse grind size, big grind size and lower temperature. The cup also will be great, but probably will be a little bit dull because there will be less acidity, which will decrease the complexity. But it could be very nice. Try it for different coffees. It works for differently for every coffee.
And just a small bonus in order to check my assessment. I think that the grind size in this coffee could be smaller, but it's like 1 to 15 TDS probably. I want to decrease the grind size and increase water temperature. That's my assessment of the taste. Because we have lower complexity, I need to increase the water temperature. 88 degrees for this exact coffee is not enough. The cup is nice, it's not thin, like there is enough body, but it could be better. And better in terms of a little bit higher complexity. As you can see, I was not wrong about the low extraction. 1, 3, 2, TDS is a little bit low, but there is not enough of acidity for this coffee. And when we have more acidity, we need to compensate with body in order to have more balanced cup. That's why I want to decrease the grind size like by two clicks. It will be great. Now it's 20, I will be using 18 next time. And in order to have shorter brewing time, like under three minutes again, I'm going to use 92 degrees Celsius four degrees raise, you know, to have more complexity, more vibrant acidic cup, something like this. So now you see how it works. As you can see, it's a very useful tool because now I can see how many clicks I should decrease, where to go, because my assessment was 1 to 15, 1.15 TDS and it's 1.3, which is, difference is huge. Of course, this can be done without any tools, but it makes the process faster. Here is the TDS with 92 degrees and 18 clicks. So my assumption was correct. The cup is nice, there is lots of complexity, and what I forgot to say, that if you want to change the dose, you just need to play with the grind size, that's it. If you want to increase the dose from 15 grams to 30, you just increase by two clicks probably, and it will be fine. If you want to decrease the dose, decrease the grind size. Hope you learned something, and let me know in the comments, should I do a video about how this method works, why it works, why it is better than regular recipes, and should I do more broomings of coffee and commentary on how I adjust it and how I approach it. That's it for today. See ya.